does God still speak? I mean, I know God spoke 2,000 years ago. I mean, we got a record of it right here in the Bible. He spoke to Adam, to Eve. He spoke to Noah, to, to Joseph, to Moses. He spoke to Jesus at his baptism and so forth. And we, we know he can speak. I mean, we know he did speak. But does God still speak? Well, today, I hope to convince you that he does by sharing some stories of his voice in my life. I remember the very first time that God spoke to me. I was 10 years old. My parents were church attenders, and the church was led by a pastor who, who seemed to yell a lot about hell. And I remember going home after church, changing out of my scratchy church clothes. You guys all remember scratchy church clothes. And my mom, she would be making grilled cheese sandwiches, and I'd lay back on my bed, and I think about what it would be like to meet God. Now, it wasn't a pleasant thought. The imagery that, that rose up in my mind was worthy of a Stephen King nightmare, right? I saw myself walking up to God's throne. And when God saw me coming, he'd reach out, pull this big lever, and the floor would like drop out from underneath me, and I'd fall all the way to hell. It freaked me out. So one Sunday at church, I'm telling my teacher about it, and she told me, Oh, honey, God loves you. You just listen for the voice of God today in church. And if you hear his voice, don't be afraid. Just do what he says. Well, so off to church I went. And with this lady's words like echoing in my ears, just listen. Listen for the voice of God. Now, I wasn't too sure what she meant, but like at the end of the service on that day, on September 10th, 1974, I sensed not an audible voice, mind you, but a voice telling me to give my life to God. So I did. That day, I talked to God about my fears. I invited him in my life. And friends, I've never felt that fear of hell since. It was my first experience with hearing that voice. But it was hardly my last. Fast forward to adult life. I'm an executive pastor. The church I was at had me using every business skill I had. I'm negotiating with the city over building permits. I'm reviewing architectural plans, hiring staff, setting up retirement and health care accounts. It was a lot of business. And I was trained for business. But I wasn't fulfilled in it. One day, Lisa says, Ray, you're successful in this executive job at church, but, but I can tell you're not happy. I want you to listen to something. It's a tape I made for you while we were dating. And she hadn't given me the tape because it was really kind of sappy and sentimental and all that. But, but now I'm kind of curious, hey, what's on this tape? So there in the spare bedroom of our first home, I put the tape into the cassette recorder and I heard Lisa talk about the joy that she saw in me when I was pastoring teenagers. And when the tape ended, I heard that voice again. Ray, return to your first love. And I told Lisa what I heard, and, and she confirmed that's what she was thinking as well. And she asked, where do you think God's going to lead us? And I told her about a brand new church in the city called Shatteridge. It was on the other side of town. I'd never been there, but I sensed that's where God would point me at. And so there in our spare bedroom at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night, we prayed, God, would you call us to pastor teenagers at Shadow Ridge. Well, 12 hours later, Monday morning, 10 a.m., I get a phone call from the pastor of Shadow Ridge Church. He says, Ray, I know this isn't going to make any sense to you. I mean, we only got five kids at our church, and you're at a much bigger church, but we've been praying for a youth pastor, and God has told us to call you. Now, <laughs> When I told God the night before to call us, if he wanted me to do this, I had not expected it would be like an actual phone call. <laughs> like, I'd never met this pastor before, but I knew what my next step was. And in just a month or so, we sold our home, we moved, and in those months, those five kids and I began a student ministry that reached over 800 kids and ended up on local and national news. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, it's written, man shall not live on bread alone. But on every word, catch this, that comes from the mouth of God. And listen, as I learned, there may not seem like much of a plan, you know, when God speaks. I mean, he tells Noah to build a boat. <laughs> no, I had no idea why. He tells Moses to confront the most powerful ruler in the world. I mean, God's request sometimes might seem big. It might feel small, but he knows the situation and he knows you and he can match the person up with the opportunity. And as I continued to seek God's direction, I continued to hear from him. I heard from him distinctly in 2004. I'm, I'm walking the dog and I'm praying and I'm telling God, hey God, Lisa and I will go wherever you want us to go. And God says, great, 
I want you to start a church right here in Fort Wayne. And so here we are. Now, and many of you know, I'm just kind of a nut about this dimension of Christianity. You put a quarter in me, I'll talk on this subject anytime, anyplace, for as long as you want me to talk. See, this dimension of Christianity, this, this idea of God speaking, well, friends, this is what distinguishes Christianity from every other major world religion. I mean, you pick any other religion, you boil it down to its basics, and you're going to find, like, the exact same thing. You'll find dogma and duties, beliefs and to-do lists, you'll find rules and rituals. But Christianity, you boil it down, and at its core, at its core is a relationship with a living God who has not only spoken once in history, but still speaks today. And that's what makes Christianity utterly unique from any other belief system in this world. Jesus was speaking in John 10, 3, and he says, The sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, and he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Who does the sheep listen to? Jesus says in verse 11, I'm the good shepherd. They listen to me. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. See, friends, God doesn't just speak to pastors and priests. God speaks to anyone who will listen. God will speak to you. That's the truth. No matter what spiritual condition you find yourself in, if you train your ear to be open, God will speak to you. And God doesn't only speak at the major intersections in our lives, you know, where our career is going to go one way or the other at these like huge, dramatic, defining moments. God often prompts us in our everyday circumstances. You know, when we're walking someplace and we see somebody, God's spirit might prompt us and say, hey, reach out a hand to that person. Cross a racial barrier. Cross a socioeconomic barrier. Reach out a hand to that person right now. You know, God might bring someone to mind that, that you need to encourage. You might be in a business situation, and God might give you insight that someone sitting next to you is bearing a burden that's way too heavy for them to bear alone. And you might get a little indication from God. Hey, talk to that person. Heck, just ask him if, if you could pray for them. Listen, I could spend the rest of our time talking about the times when God's spoken to me, sometimes in big ways and often in little ways. You, again, you put a quarter in me, I'm going to spit out another story. I love this stuff. One Sunday afternoon, I'm, I'm lounging on the couch in the first home that we had in Fort Wayne, and, and I hear that voice again. Ray, go upstairs. I'm tired. I've been on my feet all day teaching, and I, I just really want to relax. But I hear this voice go upstairs. And it's very clear. And friends, in my life, I've made a commitment to always follow through on that voice. So I get up and I start up the stairs. And as I get to the landing at our home on the second story, I notice smoke coming out of our second story linen closet. I mean, we don't use this closet. I mean, there shouldn't be anything coming out of it, but I see smoke. And as I get closer, I notice there's a bright light flooding out beneath the crack in the bottom of the door. And then I hear faint voices. And as I open the door, I see that someone has knocked over a lamp inside the closet and the bare bulb has burned a hole into the carpet. It's now filling the linen closet with smoke. I mean, it's just seconds away from igniting a fire. So, so I lift the lamp and I stomp out the smoldering carpet. And it's at that moment I hear Brad. He's three. I push back the clothes in that closet and I find not only him, but also my six-year-old Scott. They were playing and they brought a lamp in to keep them from being scared. And so I grabbed them. I mean, they don't even know why I'm grabbing them. They don't even know that they're in danger. I'm trying to not overreact, right? All they know is that their dad really wants to hug them right now. A lot. And I'm praying a prayer of thanks. Oh, thanks, God, for, for telling me to check the closet. I mean, I was just seconds away from losing both boys. Hebrews chapter 1 says, in the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. And I know some of you are thinking, well, Ray, you know, that just happens to you there, buddy. You know, Jesus might talk to you. I mean, because like you're a pastor, he's supposed to talk, you know, to religious people. Well, let me tell you another one. I know that's all I, I seem I'm doing today, but, but, but I just want you to know God still speaks. And this is not my story. It's one of yours. I'm meeting this business guy at a coffee shop, and he tosses me a big bag of lifesavers. I didn't know what to say because, like, this is my first lifesaver gift and all. <laughs> but he's an entrepreneur, and he says, Ray, you know how you were telling the church how they could have a relationship with God? 
He says, when you said that, I heard God say, you need to do this. So I did. He said, the next day, though, I, I got some devastating financial news, and the news was so bad, I knew that the only way my family would make it through this financial setback was if they had my life insurance money. So I wrote a note, I grabbed my gun, and I went into our bathroom to end things. And he said, Ray, as I sat on the toilet holding the trigger with the gun against my head, I heard that voice again. It was the same voice I heard at church when I asked Christ to come in my life. And the voice says, don't, don't, there's hope in me, don't. So I put the gun away and God showed me another approach to my setback that I had not seen in my distress. He said, Ray, you're a lifesaver because that voice you introduced to me is the most important voice I've ever heard. Friends, is there any way I can convince you that it is important to pay attention to the promptings of God. Listen, I, I don't care whether he tells you to go look upstairs or to drop the gun or to build the ark or to die on a cross. We are so blessed when God speaks. And friends, God still speaks. Don't think for a second that he's quit. It doesn't matter who you are or how long you've known him. God still speaks. I've been a believer for 46 years. This man was a believer in like less than 24 hours. But God still speaks regardless. Now, in the time that remains, let me just answer the two big questions that almost always come up, you know, when I get into this idea of God speaking. The first of which is, well, how can I increase the likelihood of God speaking to me? You know, Isaiah 28, 23 says, listen and hear my voice, pay attention and hear what I say. And I would say to you, it's kind of like the silent feature on your phone. You know, you flip that switch and you can get a call, but you got no idea it happened, you know? Like right now, most of you, you know, as you sat before your screens, right, you, you probably silenced your phones, right? And and some of you, after this, uh, this service is over, you're going to forget to take your phone off silent, right? <laughs> right? I did that once. I missed 11 calls, right? I had no idea I was getting called. Now, here's my point. If you want God to speak to you, you got to understand that God tends to speak to those who really want to hear from him. And if you don't want to hear from God, if you just as soon like do life without his input, without his promptings, without his direction, without his guidance and warnings, if that's how you want to live, well, then God treats you like uh, you've put him on silence, like you've hung a big like do not disturb sign on your heart. Listen, Jesus says in Revelation 3.20, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I'll come in and eat with that person and, and they with me. You know, in that story, you got Jesus knocking. That's kind of like calling on someone, right? You can either answer the knock or you can kind of do what my dad would do when he's watching a football game. You can just ignore the dude at the door. Now, now let's think. Why would anyone who claims to be a Christian ignore God? Well, you know, I got a theory. Here it is. Some people keep God on silent because they're scared stiff. If God speaks, he might say something about their independent spirit. He might say something about their morality or lack thereof. He might say something about their behavior in the business world. He might say something about their money or their late night addiction or their sexuality or who knows. In other words, I think a lot of people put God on silent because they think that no word from God is going to be better than hearing from him. But they're wrong. After all, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Which means the bottom line question for each of us is this. Do I think I can forge a better life with God on silent? Or do I think the quality of my life will improve if I listen for his call? I mean, pick one or the other. When I was 10, I bet my life would be more adventurous and fulfilling if I listened for his call. And now that I'm a few years older, I don't even want to think about what my life would have been if I had to try to engineer it myself. Hey, any NASCAR fans watching? Any, any of you watch those Southerners driving in circles at like 200 miles an hour? You know, in NASCAR's early days, the dr drivers, they were on their own. They had to figure out their tires, their fuel, their laps, their position, all that. I mean, they were on their own because they could not communicate with their pit. But then NASCAR legalized in-helmet headsets so that drivers could communicate with their crew chiefs. 
And when they legalized it, how many drivers do you think took advantage of the opportunity to be in consistent communication with their crew chief? How many? Well, all of them, of course, because the crew chief was on their team. The crew chief had their best interest in mind. The person communicating with them had more information, a better vantage point, and increased the likelihood of a better outcome in the race. Do you think any of those guys would have put their headsets on silent? I mean, no way. Friends, if you get nothing else from having this church experience, get this. The God that wants to speak to you, he's on your side. He has better info than you have. He's got a better vantage point from where you're sitting. He really wants you to be better in the only race that you're ever going to be entered in. So get God off silent. Let me answer the other question that's almost always asked. It's number two. How do you know for sure that it's God who's speaking and not like a bad burrito, you know? If, for example, like this past February, when the weather was so cold, I had this idea in mind that, you know, perhaps God was calling me to start a new church in the Caribbean. Anybody get a similar calling when Snowmageddon was hitting us? Yeah, I'm joking. But, you know, whenever we sense God speaking, the question that we have to ask was, was that really from God? And so how do you know? And friends, that's a biblical question. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says, Do not believe every spirit. Test the spirit to see whether they're really from God. So how do you test the spirit? How do you know it's God calling? Well, again, like your smartphone, his calls have sort of a like caller ID, you know? In fact, let me give you God's number. There, there are three digits that, that must come up. Uh, not just one of them. Uh, guys, it's like getting a phone number from a girl and, you know, if you ask her number and she says, well, it's eight, that's not going to work. It ain't eight. <laughs> and God's number is similar, right? There, there's three figures to it. There's three. And the first thing that always, always, always figures into a sure call from God is Scripture. Scripture will always figure into a call from God. It will always be present. God will never, ever put an idea in your mind or prompt you to do something that contradicts the clear teaching of the written word of the Bible. That will never happen. And you'd be surprised at, you know, how many people would tell me, well, hey, God told me to cheat on my spouse or God told me to quit my job, even though I got four kids to support no other income. And I mean, we all read in the papers where like killers and criminals justify their grisly deeds. And, and when asked why they did it, they would say, oh, well, God told me to do it. So how do some of us react to that? I mean, we hear someone misuse a spiritual prompting and we say, well, I'll never be one of those nuts. And you throw the baby out with the bathwater and you're all proud that you've never made that mistake and you never will. But listen, the pride of never making the mistake will only cause you to be ineligible for the most supernatural and exciting dimension of the Christian faith. Yeah, you're never going to make a mistake, but you're never going to get a prompting that leads you on a new adventure either. You're never going to get a word from God that takes you down a new path that winds up being one of the best paths that you can imagine life being on. Friends, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. If other people like screw up with this, if they go to an excess and do loony stuff, that's their business. You keep an ear open to heaven. And when you hear something, check it against God's caller ID. See if it matches up with scripture. And then, remember what Jesus said will always figure to be present. Matthew 10, 16, he says, Be wise. Be wise as serpents, gentle as doves. Jesus was raising the wisdom level of his followers. So, if you get a prompting from God, check it to see if wisdom is figured into it. Check scripture. Check wisdom. I mean, would this word from God that I think I heard, would it be something that Jesus would advocate? I mean, would it pass the, the wisdom test? Like a young couple thinks of buying a house for the very first time and they walk into the very first one they look at and it's 50 grand higher than their budget. But you know, the real estate agent, they're like, uh, hey, if we don't make an offer right now, it's going to be gone forever. Well, maybe that means it's God's house for us, they say. Right? It's here and it's right now. The opportunity is to buy it. But friends, what would wisdom tell them? Wisdom would say, hey, slow down, walk out, cool off. You know, people come to me and they say, you know, hey, we talked to God and he said to get married. So we're getting married. And I'm like, oh, congratulations. That's awesome. How long have you two known each other? Well, we've known each other almost two weeks. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Is that the path of wisdom? I mean, God told you to? Really? Wow. Slow down. 
The path of wisdom says, slow down. Scripture and wisdom, they always figure into God's call. Always. And the final thing that always figures into his call is in Proverbs 15, 22. It says, plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors, they succeed. Proverbs eleven fourteen 14 says the same thing. For lack of guidance, a nation falls. But listen, with many advisors, that's what makes victory sure. And the idea here is if you sense God speaking to you, find two or three other veteran Christ followers, you know, people who are further down the spiritual path than you are, describe the situation to them in detail, and then ask humbly, do you think God really did speak to me? I mean, is this the voice of God, or might I have my wires crossed? What do you think? Friends, I have many, many times submitted my plans to wise counsel. I've never once regretted it. When I started this church, I was going to finance the launch of it with a very complicated financial strategy that involved selling my house and downsizing so I could forgo a salary and use our family resources to get things going. And, and it passed the scripture test. I mean, nothing in scripture would prohibit me from downsizing. It passed the wisdom test. I mean, it wasn't jumping to a conclusion or doing something foolish. It passed those tests. But I needed to see if it would also pass the godly counsel test. So I asked some wise advisors, people that knew more about God and more about finance than me. And the first guy thought, well, that's a clever idea. And had I only asked his advice, I would have followed through on it. But the third guy I asked, he was a banker. He not only pointed out the weakness in my plan, he helped me see a better plan. And his counsel was amazing. He says, Ray, I know you got the finance thing all figured out. But listen, it's going to take everything that you and Lisa have to get, to get a church going. You're going to be putting your family through enormous stress and change. So don't add to that stress by trying to sell your house, buy another, change schools, and your kids' neighborhood friends. And don't try to finance a church by yourself. I mean, give to it, but encourage others to give too so that you're not going to be alone in starting it. Oh boy, was that valuable, valuable counsel. Oh wow. I, I, and I only got it because I wanted to know if God was speaking. Because sometimes he's not. Sometimes it's just a kooky idea that we have that we want to think is God. No, listen, God will pass all three tests. All three will figure into that caller ID. Listen, whenever you get a prompting, especially if it's one that's got like sweeping consequences for you and your family or career, check that caller screen, right? The one where you think it's God and see if scripture Wisdom and godly counsel all show up. If not, stop. Stop. Because that's not God. Stop. Listen, as we close, here's the deal. Do you want to live the rest of your life with God on silent? I mean, is that how you want to live it? Or do you want to hear from God? Listen, you can take God off silent right now. You can enable your life to hear from him like I did when I was 10. You can say, God, for the rest of my life, I'm going to have an ear open to heaven. I don't want to miss a single prompting that comes my way. Do you want that? Then let me show you how to get it. Let's pray together. God, again, we thank you for this incredible method of communication that we can have with you. Anytime, anywhere, we can just talk to you. Very informally, very relationally, very real. But God, many of us, like our phones, we've just put you on silent. And we've been running our own lives. And maybe that's you here today. You're thinking, I've kind of been doing that my whole life. And if that's you, here's how you move that switch. You say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for like just putting you on silent, for ignoring you. Today, I'm turning my ringer on. <laughs> Today, I want to hear from you daily. I, I want to know your will for me. I want to know what my purpose is on this planet. God, today, come into my life. Change me from the inside out. Would you pray that right now? Just say, God, forgive me. Come into my life. Today, I'm taking you off silent. I want to hear your voice. Oh, friends, if you just pray that, it's, it's the absolute best prayer you could ever pray in your life. And maybe you've prayed it before, and maybe you're a very mature believer, but you have found in your life that you somehow have switched God off, and you haven't been listening for his voice. Maybe it's a sin in your life. Maybe it's a pattern. Maybe it's some situation where you're just not sure you want to hear from God. Listen, you must know that his plans for you are better than any plans that you could concoct up. Would you right now make that decision?
to take him off silence. Believers, right now, would you just say, God, today, I want to hear from you. I want to lean my ear towards heaven and hear your voice. Would you pray that right now? Say, God, speak, speak, speak to me. Father, we thank you that you still speak. I've known that in my own life. I've seen it in testimony of the lives around me. And I'm so grateful that for everyone that leans their ear towards you, you have words to say that are the absolute best for their life. Thank you that you're that way with us, that you love us, that you care about us, that you have the best plans for us. For it's in Christ's name we pray this. Amen. Hey, today, if you said to God for the first time, I want to take you off silent, I want to hear from you, would you let us know by putting hashtag Jesus in the feed right now? Just put hashtag Jesus. Our church exists to help people find and follow Jesus. And when you let us know that you found him, man, it's so exciting to me personally and to the team here. Let us know, would you? And friends, if you've not yet joined us in praying, we are challenging everyone here at The Point to pray five minutes a day. And you know, if 288 of us would pray five minutes a day, we'd have round-the-clock prayer coverage 24-7, 365. Join us, would you? We just put hashtag I pray in the feed and join us as we pray for, for ourselves, for our families, for our city, and for our world. Hey, here's Deanna with the details. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching and checking us out. Hey, I want you to know we go live every Sunday, 9, 10, 15, and 11, 30. So I would love for you to like and subscribe to make sure that we can stay connected together all the time. I'll see you next time.